This is a video on how to create effective ship constructor renderings in Autodesk VRED. First, we open the FBX file, we either exported from Ship Constructor or from Navisworks. To open the file takes a bit of time depending on the size of the project, in this case about 7 minutes. Once we have the project in Autodesk VRED, we can begin cleaning it up. First, we'll note that the FBX file imported from Ship Constructor, either directly or via Autodesk Navisworks, has many, many materials. Uh, typically, it actually has one material per part, and that can bog down a system like Autodesk VRED quite, um, quite significantly. So what we first will do is we'll create a material, just a dummy material, and assign every single one of the parts to that material. You can see the interface is a little bit slow until we do that as it bogs down uh, the entire scene. So we apply all parts to that material and tell VRED to remove any unused materials, which is every material but the one we just created. Once we've done that, we can then use some of the built-in tools to optimize the scene. Uh, this ensures the geometry and other aspects of, of the model are optimized for performance in the VRED environment. That takes just a few moments, and again, depending on the size of the model. Once we have, we notice that the model has become usable in terms of uh, interaction in the VRED environment. Um, then we continue the cleanup process, and we notice that some of the uh, surface normals on, on some of the objects brought into the environment. We see some with multiple colors and some that are blue. Those indicate that the normals aren't aligned properly uh, with respect to the outside and inside of the surfaces. So we can calculate all the normals for all the objects and that takes a bit of time. We also select and can just flip some of those manually uh, to clean up those that are um, still having issues. This isn't actually required for final rendering, but it does make the model um, more usable and look better in terms of interacting in the VRED environment. Once we've done that and we're happy with the result, we still have a little bit of cleanup to do, um, or in this case just optimization and a few different aspects. Uh, next step will be to generate um, what is called ambient occlusion. For those that aren't familiar, ambient occlusion is essentially self-shadowing of the model. So if you look at it, for example, in the corner of a room, you'll notice that as you approach the corner or where two walls or the wall and the ceiling meet, everything looks a bit darker and that's due to that, that self-shadowing. And we can simply tell uh, VRED to generate that self-shadowing and we see it here. And it just adds more depth to the model and it's a very lightweight way of getting good-looking renderings. Um, that will take a bit of time, as you saw. It was about 15 minutes in this model, but doesn't require any interaction from the user. And once we have, we can then turn that realistic visualization back on, and we start to see more depth to the model. The next step, uh, we'll just configure a few camera settings just to uh, set up the camera and the depth of field, the focal length of the camera in this case, to be what we like it to be, um, just to give it a bit more uh, more of a realistic look. Um, next step, we can go in and create a spherical environment map for image-based lighting. Um, I find this is one of the easiest ways to get really high quality lighting without fiddling with lights and playing around. So we add our uh, ocean environment um, HDR map as image-based lighting, and now we see the model start to really pop and, and shine. And um, obviously, we haven't applied materials yet, which is the next step, but um, it's starting to look good already. The next step is to to create materials, and because we are going to be assigning the materials generally by part types, we'll start to create a material for a plate, um, and continue on to create materials for other 
types of, of items in the model systems, um, the external shell equipment, and so on. And then, because this model came from Autodesk Navisworks and Ship Constructor, we can use tools to find items by their part types. We find all the plate, and we assign it to the plate material. Then we can go in and find all of the stiffeners in the model. And we assign those to our stiffener material. We'll find face plates and assign those to that material as well. And we'll find piping and assign that to our systems material. One of the last things we'll do, all of the equipment in this model is actually imp exported as a 3D solid, so we'll have to select all 3D solids and assign the equipment material. Um, clean up a few last items, um, some of the equipment on the deck will make it uh, pop a little bit similar color to what we're going to make the shell. And speaking of the shell, we'll select and find all objects. In this case, we're doing it by the components of the model, which happen to be named shell. Uh, it depends on how um, curved plate as well could be selected. But we'll clean up that material. And now at this point, we're just going to clean up any last details that we uh, that we aren't happy with. Find a plate that just happened didn't didn't happen to belong to the the shell, but is actually should be assigned that material. Uh, here we notice some of the stiffeners on the bulwark there that are um, actually modeled the way they are for production purposes. Um, so we would typically hide those and clean those up a little bit. Um, but editing them in this environment is impossible, so we would just hide them. If we're using a product like Autodesk 3ds Max, we could actually modify that geometry. So now we'll go in and render a few uh, test images. And we select a an image name, a base name um, for the images we're going to render. We'll set uh, a higher resolution in this case, uh, 1280 by 720 HD image. Set some quality settings. Uh, make sure we're exporting a transparent background. And in this case, we're going to export multiple render passes. So just a beauty color pass, a specular reflection pass, and a pass for the ambient occlusion. That just gives me a bit more control over how to composite and create the final image. So this image takes about 10 minutes to render, and longer obviously for bigger projects or higher quality images. But once we have um, allowed it to complete rendering, we can take a look at the results now. Here we have just the beauty pass, no depth to it, no ambient occlusion applied yet, specular reflection and the ambient occlusion pass. Um, we composite these images together using you know, our favorite tool. You can see we end up with a, a nice high quality render. And I've actually created a few more samples, as you can see, uh, of a final, final result with a bit more cleanup. And the cleanup is about 10 additional minutes, so a really quick way to get really good looking results.